we have so many massive stories to get through today my friends as are we set to break this summer window by potentially signing Victor Simhen on a loan deal so many things to get through so many things to talk about apologies for the lack of uploads and the inconsistency as you guys can see the environment's changed up now I've left my old apartment, I've moved out and I've still got a lot of work to do to start settling in where I'm staying at. I've only just got internet like 50 minutes before the time of this actual recording. So life is so hectic right now, it's so long, but I'm hoping over the course of this week, you'll slowly see this room make more sense behind me. So I hope you guys enjoy today's video. Hit that like button, share your thoughts and your opinions too. And my friends, let's waste no more time and let's get straight into things. Now, speaking of moving on from the past now, I think it's only fitting that we discuss the resolution to this Enzo Fernandez controversy as it seems like the whole squad have accepted Enzo's apology. We've learned that both Axel de Sassi and Reese James have been the mediators to help with this reconciliation with the squad. And it seems like the rest of the squad now have accepted Enzo Fernandez's apologies. Now, we won't know exactly what was said, but you can tell that I'm sure Enzo had to do more than just say sorry. And I'm sure the squad really felt that because, listen, he's their teammate for nearly like two years now. They know he's more than that. And listen, it was disappointing that he promoted such a stupid song because that was my main issue with the song, yeah. A lot of football chants can be a bit ignorant and a bit stupid. The last thing you need is the actual players now validating some of the nonsense that some fans do love about the game. And that was my main thing. And obviously the French players will feel like, listen, are you questioning our heritage? Which is a bit of a mad thing to do, right? But it's good that this thing's in the past now. We know that Enzo now has joined the squad in Atalanta. And I think later this afternoon, Enzo Maresca will finalize and give his closing statements on what's going on. But he's also played a key part in this mediation with the squad right now. So it's good that we can leave this behind us. We can move on to better things. I'm curious to see how Enzo will play in Maresca's system. I think we all know that he'll play the wings role. But at the same time, Enzo could do more than that. And could we see Maresca experiment with how he uses Enzo during this preseason? Time will tell. Let's see how it goes. Very quickly, my friends. But as you now know, the new away kit is finally released. And my lord, is this thing a beauty. Now, I'm waiting to order mine. I need to have all the kits this season. I think they look absolutely amazing. If you're someone that also feels the same way and want to help support the channel, use my affiliate links below in the description and in the card above. And don't forget to use DD10 at checkout to get 10% off your final order. So good luck with that. And let's get back into the news. And I guess we move on to bigger and better things because wow, this morning, David Ornstein released a bombshell suggesting that at the moment, Napoli are currently in negotiations to finalize a move for Romelu Lukaku. As we know, they have agreed a three-year deal worth 97k a week. We've learned over the past 24 hours that Napoli are open to including Awesome Hen as part of negotiations. Of course, they would be separate ones, but they would all tie together in an overall package and deal. And today, Ornstein reveals that we are looking to sign a Simhen on loan with an option to buy. Wow. When I saw this news break this morning, I was like, my Lord, out of all the days, out of all the days, it had to be this day when I don't have any internet. But <laughs> it's funny what happens to news though, if you allow it to simmer, if you allow it to brew, because earlier this afternoon, we did learn from a Simhen's agent in Kalenda that this whole loan news was absolutely fake and there was nothing there with him saying i read about fantasy exchanges with victor as if he was a package to be delivered quickly this package by the way is the top scorer of the third scudetto in the history of napoli respect and stop fake news let's not forget he's basically accusing david ornstein of putting out a fake report but we all know the clout and the weight that the Ornstein name and brand holds during transfer windows. He would not be reporting fake news unless he's heard something here. Now, only speculation for my part. If there was something simmering behind the scenes involving a potential move like this, 
Would he want it to be made public, open and aware? Maybe not. On one hand, does it suggest that this is the type of move we are hoping to engineer based on the current interest around Victor Simhen? Or does this news reveal the fact that Napoli are not going to play ball with this? They will not accept any loan deals with options to buy. And maybe this is purely a speculative effort and move on our parts. Time will tell. I'm not going to say Ornstein's a liar. This guy will not be reporting anything unless he has some concrete facts or maybe he's been spoon fed some false information. But I think there is a lot more to this story because for him to confidently report that a loan option was on the horizon, I actually thought to myself, and I think we all did, this is a pretty realistic outcome and resolution to this news going on right now because it comes down to a few things. Number one, we've learned that Paris and Japan have kind of called their interest at the moment. The only recently just signed on Carlo Ramos and Colin Buani last summer, they haven't found any suitors to buy any of them. There's no way they're going to fork nearly 300 million on three strikers in two windows and keep all of them satisfied with minutes in game time. That is not going to happen. So with Paris Saint-Germain stalling at the moment, because we can't forget they had agreed personal terms with the striker, it does seem like the suitors for Victor are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Yes, Arsenal have shown interest, but I feel like with Arsenal, they will move in late depending on anything currently happening, but nothing is too strong from their side. So let's discuss us, because as we know, Conte now is ready to start working with Lukaku. He needs Lukaku here for pre-season. He doesn't want to waste any more time. Napoli have been accelerating all the business and deals they've been doing to rejuvenate their squad. I mean, they're trying to sign Billy Gilmore, they've signed defenders, they've signed midfield players. But Napoli are in a situation where to fund a lot of these moves and to further improve the squad, they must sell a Simhen. Because one of the main reasons as to why a Simhen must go is the incredible wages that Napoli put him on. They can't afford to pay him that 10 million every year until his contract expires. They just can't afford to do that. Hence why Osimhen is allowed to move on. He has been given that blessing and the player now is ready to move on as well too after basically completing his time in Italy. As we get closer and closer to the end of this window, as the season gets closer and closer and closer, there is now pressure from Napoli's side now to try and find some flexibility with their demands. No club is going to exercise this release clause. But no one has that type of money in particular this summer. So the only thing they could do is one, reduce this asking price by a significant amount, or two, engineer a move allowing Lukaku to sign for them and allowing a Simhem to come to us. Because all throughout last season, we invested so much time behind the scenes persuading a Simhem to sign for us. We gave him the package, we gassed him up. We use our heavy hit old players like Drogba, Mikel, to persuade Victor to find himself at Stamford Bridge. And at the moment, Victor ideally prefers to sign for us outside of any other club because he is a fan. He's a supporter. And I thought to myself, there's no way after all that time we've put into this deal, we would just get up on Victor and just go for any other striker just like that. It just didn't make too much sense for me. As I said about this story time and time again, as we get close to the season sign with the pressure that Napoli are on, they will eventually have to be flexible, be malleable and allow Victor to leave for a reduced fee. Does this mean that they could be open to a loan option? Honestly, who knows? Personally, I like the idea of signing a big player from Serie A using the same like negotiation tactics Serie A clubs constantly use when it comes to buying our players. I, I kind of like the idea and I think to myself, you know what? This could make sense, right? As we know, Champions League football really reduced our chances to be ambitious this window. That was the massive L for this summer. So it does mean that we can't technically afford to buy Victor for his wages or the asking price. However, with a loan, I see it like this. If you look at Awesome Hen's book value for the year, I'd imagine that's something like, I don't know, 12 million, 30 million. If we could engineer a Joao Felix type of loan deal where we're paying a lot of his wages, we're paying a very high loan fee, essentially for one season, you're paying above the book value that Awesome Hens on with Napoli. If they could make a profit on Victor for one year, Napoli may feel, you know what, on paper this makes sense because we feel confident that Victor will find success at Chelsea where we feel like he could single-handedly secured Champions League football for us. If that does happen, 
we would then have the finances to be able to complete a move by exercising that option to buy at the end of that loan spill. And technically, that would guarantee Napoli the money they wanted for Victor because you'd imagine that if we could buy him on that loan option next summer, you're paying like, I don't know, 75, 80 million on top of maybe like the 20 million it will cost you to potentially sign him on loan for one season. That could work out. Napoli get the experienced striker that they want that's worked under Conte before. They get Osimhen off their wage bill and we sign the world-class striker we've been looking for for a very long time to try and like finally complete the squad and hopefully start, you know, pushing us up that table again. So all I'll say to end things is let's watch this space because I personally can't believe that all this news is fake from Ornstein. I can't believe that. But normally in situations like this in life, it is a bit of both. So let's see what happens. But I think this Osman deal now has now taken a big twist this summer. And let's see how it progresses and what happens over the next few days. So my friends, how do you feel about this news? Are you excited at the prospects of potentially getting Osman again this summer? Or do you still feel like we're doing the most because we're signing the wrong type of striker that once upon a time at the start of the summer window, Reports came out saying that we moved on from him because he didn't suit Maresca's style. <sighs> yeah, you guys, leave your thoughts and opinions below. Before we move on, we have three big stories to discuss and we now discuss the latest updates involving Conor Gallagher because as it has been reported today, Atletico Madrid now are intensifying their efforts to sign Gallagher. They're hoping to agree personal terms with the midfield player and they're hoping to secure a deal very, very soon on Simeone's demands. Now, in terms of a fee, Marana reveals that an offer of around 34 million plus add-ons that takes the package to around 40 million could be enough to entice us to be able to find that agreement with Atletico Madrid. But at the same time, this afternoon, Sky Sports have reported that Tottenham are set to come back to try and find a move for Gallagher. Are they now reacting to Atletico Madrid's efforts? Because as we've known for a very long time, Posteglu wants Gallagher. He wants a midfield player that can play in all phases at the same time because he likes to have that flexible squad to work with. Let's see how things go. But personally, if I had to sell Gallagher, I am selling him to Atletico Madrid. I am not strengthening a domestic rival. Are you nuts? Are you mad? If it means I take a little hit on the profit I'm making from a player that would be sold for pure profit to begin with. I would do that because if Tottenham improves to the point where they could maybe fight us for that Champions League spot, I'd be missed out again. Because someone like a Gallagher was that difference maker? Nah, nah, nah. I don't think I could ever, um, you know, come back from a situation like that. It doesn't make sense. I think we must try and find a way now to engineer this move to Atletico Madrid. Do I think it's mad that Gallagher's leaving to begin with? Absolutely. Knowing that Maresca has that and Diddy sell guy leading the press, Gallagher is like the top class option replacement and upgrade on that Ndidi style figure. We've seen recent inconsistencies in our high press. I know it's only like two preseason games, I get it. But Gallagher is one of the best pressing tactical players in the league. And it is mad that we're gonna weaken our squad with a guy this fit, a guy this good for the football club for, I really don't know the reason. So listen, if we're forcing him out, he must go outside of the country because that is the only thing that makes sense for us. So my friends, that's the Gallagher updates out of the way. And now we end things with the final reports because late last night it was revealed out from nowhere yet again that we are set to sign another teen wonder kid. And sometimes with these stories now, I feel like we're just like in this FM save where we're in our fifth, 10th season. We've won like the Champions League six times in a row. We're unbeaten in the league for like three years. Now the only challenge left is to essentially build that Wonder Kid squad by no one and develop these guys to the point they can maintain that success. That's how I see the situation. The only difference being that I feel like we are fast tracking this process now when our first team squad isn't even patterned yet. That is my thing. But regardless, the news came out from Belgium, from reporters Sasha Tavalieri and Christoph Tuera, and they report that we've held concrete talks with Genk for Mike Penders, the 18 year old six foot seven goalkeeper. I mean, what a physical freak. Six, seven at 18 years old. Whatever diet this kid was on, I wanna see what it was. It has to be revealed because that is making no sense to me. Regardless, 
we now are looking to try and find a way to sign this kid. He will cost significantly more than the original 10 million euros we spent to buy Thibaut Courtois from the same club Ghent all those years back. And our plan is to sign him and then return him back on loan to Ghent. And I guess that makes a lot of sense because he's only played one professional game for Ghent, playing against Standard Liège, I think, last week. So, listen, we're not afraid to splash big money on youth that have barely been tested at a domestic level. There is some risk to that. You know, touch wood, God forbid that any of them pick up injuries. That would really mess up a lot of our future plans. But it does seem like this grand vision we are forcing so quickly is to have like three to five top options for every single position from a first team squad level to the developmental level with all these youths that we're buying right now. On paper, it's not bad. I've not criticized this strategy. Is it morally the best though? I'm not too sure because for myself, I just feel like what is the utility to this like Hunger Games development path where you're buying all these top youth guys to fight out for positions that aren't even guaranteed in the first team right now. That's the interesting thing. I see why it makes financial business sense to pursue things this way because with the wages these kids are on, with the contract lengths you're offering them to buy them at their early, early stages, it costs you nothing to take this Hunger Games gamble. And if one or two are successful out of five, the rest pays off itself. But morally, is it right though? And the moral has been, development is not linear. A lot of the world-class players we see today, you would never have guessed they'd be world-class if judging them from 16, 17, 18 years old. You know, it's not a guarantee that if you sign someone this young, they are guaranteed to become the next core 12, the next whatever. What can affect that are the variables, right? How you're used, your relationship with the squad and the manager, your confidence, the league you're playing in, how many minutes you get access to. Are you playing in the right system or tactics, etc, etc. I'd feel a lot more confident about this model we're looking to build if we had like maybe three feeder clubs at our disposal where we're literally signing these guys and keeping them in our creative environments to really monitor their development. But we're not really doing that because we haven't secured all the clubs and it's just not going as straightforward as this theoretical master plan seems to suggest. Now, listen, Penders could be amazing, but listen, I don't even know at this point, to be fair with you. I just thought it's worth discussing because there's big news currently coming out from Belgium. So my friends, I think that's everything I want to discuss today. I'm going to try and sneak out another video later today because I don't like when I don't make videos, but I'm not on top of things. You know what I mean? I wasn't happy when I released my review so late for the uh, game against Celtic. It's not my style and I'm not making that same mistake against Club America tomorrow. So my friends, hopefully you'll see me again. Share your thoughts and opinions in the video. I'm the EFC, this is Blue Lions TV and I'll see you all soon. Cool.